In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to play PlayStation 2 games on PC using the PC SX2 emulator. Before getting started with the emulator, you want to make sure that you have these two folders ready on your desktop. The first folder is going to be the PS2 BIOS. What the BIOS file is, is basically the files which the original PlayStation 2 console uses to boot the system. And the emulator is going to need these BIOS files so that they can run the PlayStation 2 games. You can extract these BIOS from a PlayStation 2 console which you already own or you can find downloads of the BIOS files online but I'm not going to be showing you how to do that in this video. Once you've downloaded the BIOS file they're going to look something like this. Once you have the BIOS files ready, you can go on to the next step, which is getting the CD-ROMs of your PlayStation 2 games ready. If you have a CD reader, you can extract the ROM files directly from PlayStation 2 games, which you already own. You can also find downloads for the games online, but again, I'm not going to be showing you how in this video. When you have the ROMs of your PlayStation 2 games, you want to make sure that you extract them. And how you can do that on Windows is you just right click on the file and then you select extract all and then you select extract and you want to make sure that you do this for any game which is in a dot zip or any other compressed format once you've finished extracting all of your games you can go ahead and delete the old compressed files because we'll no longer be using them and once you have your PS2 BIOS and the PS2 games folders ready, you can go ahead to the next step, which is downloading the PC SX2 emulator. To download the emulator, you want to go to this website, pcsx2.net. I'm going to leave a link to the website in the description. And once you're on here, you want to click on latest stable and you want to select the second option here, which says download for the portable version of the emulator. And once your file has finished downloading, you want to open up your downloads folder. And as it comes in a .7z compressed format, you want to right click on the file, select extract all, and then select extract. Once you've extracted the emulator, you can move it to your desktop just to make things easier. You want to open up the downloaded emulator files. And in this list of files, you want to double click on this file over here, which is the file which we're going to be using to run the emulator. Now the PCSX2 setup is going to launch. In the screen over here, you can change your language and you can also change the theme if you want a different theme, but I'm just going to keep it at the default. Click on next. In this step, they're going to ask you to choose the directory where you saved your BIOS files. You want to click on browse, go to desktop, and then choose PS2 BIOS here. Click on select folder. As you can see here, it automatically loads the BIOS files for you. And I have BIOS files for three different regions. It normally doesn't matter which regions you have. I'm just going to select USA and then click on next. In this step, they're going to ask you to choose the directory where you saved the CD-ROMs of the PlayStation 2 games which you're going to be playing. Just click on add. Once again, you want to make sure that you go to your desktop, select PS2 games, and then click on select folder. Click on yes. And once it's found your directory, you can go ahead and click on next. In this step, you can choose to connect a controller if you want to play with a controller. So controller port one is going to be player one and controller port two is going to be player two. By default, they're going to assume that you're playing with your keyboard. But if you have a controller, then you want to select automatic mapping and you want to select your controller in this drop down menu. As I'm going to be playing using my keyboard, I'm just going to go ahead and click on next, click on finish and the setup will have been completed. As you can see here, as we've already given the emulator the directory to our PlayStation 2 games, it will automatically populate the emulator with those games. I'm just going to go full screen and I would recommend that you go to grid view over here. And as you can see, our games are missing cover art. So in the next step, we're going to be adding cover art for each game. And instead of having to do this one by one, there is a much faster way. At the top here, you just want to click on tools and then go to cover downloader. 
order. Here they're going to ask you to input a link. So what you want to do is click on the second link in the description and it's going to take you to this GitHub link. When you're on here, you just want to scroll down all the way until you see these two URLs. The first URL is for default covers and the second URL is for 3D covers. Either of these URLs will work, but I'm just going to choose the first URL. To copy the URL, you want to click on this icon, then you want to head back to the emulator and you want to right click here and click on paste and then click on start. As you can see, it automatically adds a cover image to each game and this makes things look much more aesthetic when you're scrolling through a list of games. The next thing that we want to do is change some of the settings in the emulator before we start playing. So head back to this top menu and then click on settings and then click on interface. Under game display, you want to select start full screen, which means whenever you launch a game, it's going to automatically start in full screen. Next, click on game list. Now, if you add any new games to your PlayStation 2 games directory, then you want to select scan for new games. And if you change the directory where you want to store your PS2 games, then you can click on add here and then select your new directory. Under the graphics option, you want to click on renderer. If you have a newer computer, then you can select Vulkan here. It will just give much better performance. And if you have a weaker, older PC, then you want to select one of these three options. I'm just going to keep it at the default for now as I've tried it before and it works for me. Then under adapter, you want to select your graphics card. But if you don't have a graphics card, you can keep this at default as well. Under the aspect ratio option, if you want to play on full screen, then you can select widescreen 16. 16, 9. However, if you want to play in the native aspect ratio which the original PS2 games were released, then you should select standard 4.3 here. I'm going to select the widescreen option, but just so you know, this can add some distortion depending on the game that you're playing. Next, you want to select the rendering tab and under isotropic filtering, you want to select 16 times. And now the last thing that you have to do under the settings is to go to your memory cards because we're going to be adding a memory card slot which will allow us to save the games while we're playing. So you just want to click on create, choose a name for this memory card, I'm just going to call it PS2 saves and then click on OK. Click on OK again and then right click on the memory card and then select use for slot 1. And now you can click on close. Next, we're going to be looking at our controller settings as well as the hotkeys that we can use on our keyboard to play the games. So you want to go ahead and click on settings and over here, you want to click on controllers. On the left side, you want to select controller port 1, which is the controller for player 1. If you already have a PlayStation controller connected, then it should have already automatically mapped all of the buttons to your controller. But if you're playing on your keyboard, then this screen is very helpful to let us know which hotkeys we're going to be using to play. For example, if you want to click on circle, then this is going to be L on your keyboard. If you want to click on R1, then it's going to be E. And if you want to move the left analog controller, then this is going to be W, A, S, and D on your keyboard. So just make sure that you take a look at this screen before you start playing. And once you've memorized them, you can click on close here. Before you can start playing your game, there's one last step, which is right clicking on the game and then selecting properties. On the left side, you want to select patches. And as you can see here, the emulator automatically detects the patches which you can add to your game, which will give the game a much better performance. The type of patches that you find here depends on the game that you're playing and how popular the game is. And you're probably going to find a lot of widescreen 16.9 patches, and this will remove any distortion if you're playing the game in this aspect ratio. I recommend enabling all of these patches as it will typically give you the best in-game performance, and I would especially recommend enabling the 60 FPS patches. And once you have your patches enabled, you can go ahead and click on close. And now you're ready to launch your games. So to launch a game, all you have to do is double click on that game. And as you can see, the game is going to automatically launch. EA Games Challenge.
Just need a few minutes of your time to cover the rules of the burnout road. To succeed... Alright guys, and if you want to save your game, you want to click on escape, go to safe state, and you can choose an empty slot for where you want to save your game. And if you want to load the game, then you want to click on escape again, go to load state, and then select the save slot which you want to load from. Alright guys, and that's it for this video. As you can tell, it's quite easy to play PlayStation 2 games on your PC. So I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe as well for more content like this. And I'll see you all in the next one.